Yes, Jesus, Holy Spirit of the Living God, we want to bless your willing name tonight. We worship you, our Maker, righteous Judge. We honor your holy name. We bless you with all our hearts. Our heart is full of praises unto your holy name because you deserve it all. We love you with all our hearts. With, we love you with all our mind and our soul. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you so, so much for who you are. Thank you, O Lord, for another opportunity tonight to come into your presence. We are not taking it for granted because we cannot do without you. The love we have for you has actually brought us into your presence to learn at your feet. Jehovah Jari, we thank you for keeping us alive, for watching over us, for answering our prayers, for fighting our battles. Thank you, O Lord, for loading our lives daily with your benefits. Holy Spirit of the living God, we thank you for what you are doing, what you have done, what you are about to do even tonight. How you are going to speak to us expressly, mightily through your word, by the power and the blood of Jesus. We thank you, O Lord, for your word, the anointing you will release upon our lives. That there will not be enough room for us to contain it tonight. We just bless you, we thank you. Because you are good unto us and your mercy will endure it forever. We can't thank you enough for all you've been doing in our lives. Tonight, as we have come to learn at your feet, teach us your word. Because your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. Let it continue to be so all the days of our life. We will not hear your word in vain. But we will hear it, embrace it, run with it, practice it all the days of our lives. That we will not be able to depart from it even in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, glorify your holy name even as we worship you tonight. Accept our worship even in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light. Unto my path, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way. Still, you are there right beside me. And nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Yeah, what thy word. Is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you are there right beside me, and nothing will I fear, as long as you are near, please be near us to the end, hey, hey, thy word. Is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word, thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thy word, thy word. Is the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path? Hallelujah. 
Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Um, we thank Almighty God for the life of our sister, for that praise and worship. May the Lord continue to strengthen you from strength to strength. May His glory continue to shine upon your life. Your labor, your labor in His vine will not go wasted in the name of Jesus. You will not lack any good things in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you have laid your hand on the plow, Satan will not let you look back in the name of Jesus. Uh, praise God. Um, good evening, everyone, or good day, whatever time you are watching this program. With the love of the Lord, we welcome you all to our weekly Wednesday Bible study. Uh, time with God. It comes your way every Wednesday evening, and um, we're broadcasting live. Uh, we're broadcasting live uh, from UK. We are New Heart Christian uh, Ministries. We are hopes are defined, refined, and restored. Uh, like I said, we are from Barcelona, the United Kingdom. Just in case this is the uh, first time that you will be um, worshiping with us. Um, God builds people and builds off their hopes in this church. Whatever your past, God restores people's life and all uh, lost blessings. Your case is not impossible for God to handle. Amen. Hallelujah. During any of our Bible study, we share teachings from the Bible, the Word of God. We pick on some topics that can be beneficial to our spiritual and physical lives with the direction uh, from the Holy Spirit. And we go through, through it. Holy Spirit is the one that teaches. Kari Baokaya. He impacts knowledge and wisdom. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, that these are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. These are the things God has revealed to us by Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, and reveals these to us. Amen. So, when we are here together, we rely on the power of the Holy Ghost to teach us and give us direction and the understanding of God's Word. Amen. And during this teaching, if there is any question you want to ask, please write below this video. If we see your question before the end of the broadcast, we will respond, and if not, we will bring you answer on your next Bible study. Amen. Um, we thank God. Glory. Hallelujah. Um, today, we will be alighting on some values that our Lord Jesus Christ treasured and taught us about. If we look closely in the Synoptic Gospels, the book of Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John, we will see that uh, among uh, his works, uh, was teaching people on which the apostles uh, planted their ministries from where church emanated. He has taught us so that uh, we can follow it 100%. And that is what we'll be talking about today. Things Jesus treasured that you must value. Things that Jesus Christ valued that you must treasure. We cannot cover everything in one go. We will just pick few and continue another time. Praise God. Um, we thank God Almighty God for this evening. Jehovah God Almighty, we bless you, Lord. We honor you. Father, Lord, speak through me in the name of Jesus Christ. Marikaya Bakaya. Father, Lord, speak through me in the name of Jesus Christ. You are God of knowledge and wisdom. Impact your knowledge and wisdom upon me in the name of Jesus. Do not let me say things of my own understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. For everyone under my voice this evening, Father, give them the heart of understanding your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jehovah God Almighty. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. You see, when our Lord Jesus Christ walked the surface of this earth, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. That's, uh, that, that is what the Bible says. All he was doing was walking about doing good, the works of his father. He was born without sins, lived without sins, and died without sins. Praise God. He preached love and repentance and taught people the way of the Lord. Praise God. From that, some of his teachings 
are all what we are going to talk about today, which formed part of the fundamental pillars or backbone, so to speak, of our Christian faith. Amen. The doctrine of Christ. He said to his disciples that his word is life and spirit. Praise God. And uh, he was not talking uh, just for talking's sake. Praise God. He was not just talking for talking's sake. Um, sorry, I, I never knew. Uh, I never knew that I didn't uh, remove this particular uh, banner. Praise God. Uh, can you hear me now? From Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, sorry um, if you have been watching that banner. I didn't know that um, I didn't remove it. Praise God. Well, when you are doing something like this, like that do happen. And um, okay, as I was saying, um, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 says that for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Okay. But to us who have been saved, it is the power of God. Amen. This is the word we rely on today. Amen. The book of Luke chapter 8 verse 1 states that Shortly afterward, he traveled from city to city and from village to village, preaching and declaring the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, the twelve that were, were, they were with him, these were the um, disciples, traveling from city to city and village to village uh, cannot be a small work. He was not just walking around but preaching about the kingdom of God, saying in Mark chapter 1 verse 15 that, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. It meant that God's rule has come. He treasured that. That is the purpose of his coming, to take us into the kingdom of God. Amen. So, um, one of the things our Lord also valued and which he taught about is love. You might be saying, oh, that is simple. Uh, now, love, we all love uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ taught us love one another. It's a real because he himself is love. You might be saying uh, sharing love is simple. Um, uh, but we are talking about a real love here. We are talking about a real love. Praise God. Um, I, will be, I will be talking, I will be continuing about that um, uh, real uh, love later on. But I just want our sister to come on board again and give us a um, few, maybe one or two, three uh, songs um, just um, to um, do some some few things. So um, our sister and the Lord will give us some few songs. Amen. Praise God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. You are the kind God, the great I am. Alleluia, alleluia. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Alleluia. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus, um, uh, thanks so much, our sister. Um, what a mighty God we serve. We were talking earlier on about the love of Christ. Okay, um, our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, um, love to love one another. Okay, in a real way, because He Himself is love. When the Bible says He went about doing good, that is what the Bible meant. He was showing love to the people. It was not just telling them, I love you, I love you. No, it was healing. I want, it was delivering the oppressed. Praise God. From his teaching of love is where the story of Good Samaritan came forth. It said in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 37 to 40, that love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. 
Love your neighbor as yourself. Praise God. All the law and the prophet hang on these two commandments. Listen to that. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said in the book of John chapter 15 verse 13 that greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. He called us friends because he loved us. Praise God. The word of Christ is a message of peace and love. The message of salvation and redemption. He taught us love because he wanted us to show love to everyone. Praise God. Listen to this. While he was on the uh, while he was on the cross in agony, in pain, he was still praying that God should forgive his persecutors. The book of First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 2 says that, And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all faith in the world, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. I am nothing. Love among brethren, among friends, between husband and wife, and in the family should be paramount. Praise God. You need to check if you harbor hatred against anyone in your heart, which is the opposite of love. You need to check. You need to do emoty of your heart. Jesus is love. He practiced it. He treasured it and attached value to it. So we too must adhere to that. Praise God. Number three, we've done kingdom and we've done love. Okay, that's number two. Number three now, peace in another issues of life that Jesus treasured. He brought peace, and the peace he brought is between us and God. He also wants us to live in harmony with everyone. He knows the importance of peace in one's life, and he gave it to all. He is the Prince of Peace himself. Praise God. Prophet Isaiah said of him in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 that, For us to a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. When he was about to leave the surface of the earth, he said to us in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27, that peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I did not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Praise God. While in the journey of his ministry, he did not stage a coup or stage any revolutionary campaign like those that have come before him who declared themselves Messiah. Okay, they are in the like they are in the like of um, Theudas and Judas the Galilean, as mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter five, verses three to thirty-seven. Praise God! These are the people they came and they planned revolution. They they they, they created a pandemonium among people. They, 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 they become like a freedom fighters. But they died. They died and they, we had nothing about them anymore. If you read the book of Acts chapter 5 verses 3 to 37, you will read about these particular people. Theudas and Judas, the Galilean, as mentioned. They came at a different time. Okay. And um, so but our Lord Jesus Christ didn't actually, uh, didn't do things like that. He actually preached the gospel, and when they refused him, he moved on. In the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 14, the angel said to those shepherds, this is what he said to them, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Peace among those with whom he is pleased. That's what the, that angel said to the shepherds when Jesus Christ was born. The peace is for between God and mankind which he has accorded us to us by grace. You should know that before the birth of Christ, we were in the enemies of we are the enemies of God. We are in rebellion against God. And that was why he came to restore peace between God and mankind. Praise God. So if the world is not experiencing peace now, it is because they refused to believe in him and hence rejected him. But Jesus still remains the Prince of Peace. Glory hallelujah. He still wants us to live in peace with everyone to the extent that he said in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 that Therefore, if you are offering your gifts at the altar and there you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, what do you do? Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Praise God. As simple as that. 
Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 18, say that if it is possible as far it depends on you, live at peace with what? With everyone. Praise God. Mm. Number four, Jesus brought us new life away from sins. In him, we have hope of reconciliation with God. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 2, says that for the law, that is principle or ordinance of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. By law, no one can be justified except by the grace manifested in Christ Jesus. No one can be perfect on the law. Also, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 4 to 8 says that, But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 3, verses 7 to 8, Marvel not that I said unto ye that ye must be born again. A new life in Christ is a new life and a new beginning to godliness. Being born again is living the life of um life uh, leaving the life of sins behind and embracing a new life in God. It is a new experience, a new wonderful phenomenon. Those that accepted Jesus Christ are never the same again. The book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says that for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says that once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a new person with a new beginning. Your old life has gone and all your sins are forgiven. And when you die, listen to this, when you die, you are heavenly bound. He valued human soul and does not want us to perish. The reason he laid down his life. We are not an upgrade of an animal as scientists have been saying that, oh, we, we used to be ape and then, uh, ape and then we now become, um, we now grow from ape. Because if you look at the baboons and the monkeys, they behave like uh, mankind. Uh, and they said uh, we were, we used to be like that and gradually we become a man. No, 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 no. We are not an upgrade of an animal as they say. Praise God. No lizard. No lizard has never become um, a crocodile. And no mosquito has ever become a fly. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 that Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. No other creation was ever created in that manner. No. I think I'm right. Eh? Eh, praise God. <laughs> and, and that is why Jesus Christ died for us. And, and um, this is my favorite song now. Um, Since I sorrow. Um, uh, this, um, he died for my, um, I, I, I taken me away from sins and sorrow. Okay, well, that's one of my favorite songs. Yeah. So, uh, I think when I remember, I'm going to sing that song. Praise God. Number five is that Jesus um, taught us about faith. He taught us about faith. What is faith and how we can use it? He said, whatever we ask for, we should believe we are getting it. He said in the book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 that truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Praise God. You hear that? Nothing will be impossible for you. This is same faith that Peter didn't have that made him started to sink. In the book of Matthew chapter 14 verse 28, it was the same faith he had which he used to raise Dorcas from the dead. And there was a time he didn't ha he didn't have that faith. He was thinking. So when when he had that faith, he that he, ra he raised Dorcas from the dead in the book of uh, the book of Acts chapter nine verses thirty six to forty one. We failed to accomplish many things in life because we don't simply action our faith. Jesus taught us the value of having faith. Say to a mountain. Say to that issues in your life. Say to that challenges. Say to those enemies to move and they will move with faith. You can develop your faith by reading the word of God and listening to those who have experienced the divine touch of God. Praise God. Faith comes by hearing and also reading the word of God. Jesus assured us in the book of John, 
chapter 14 verse 12 that verily truly i tell you whoever believes in me will do the works i've been doing and they will do even greater things than these because i'm going to the father praise god our lack of faith are not uh, uh, it's not allowing us to do so much because we lack the we lack the faith we lack the ingredient that is why many of us rely on people to be doing everything spiritual for us. Many of us are praying to God that we don't have faith in. It can't work. It doesn't work out like that. Without faith, you can't please God. At least, before you can ask anything, anyone anything, you must have believed that that person exists. Jesus taught us, he taught us to have faith. He treasured it. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Number six. Number six, another value of life that our Lord Jesus Christ cherished and which he taught us about is the importance of fasting and prayer. Praise God. You can find the establishment of this in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21, and the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 29, where it says, However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting because they were asking him why they can't perform that miracle. And uh, he said to them that this cannot go out except by prayer and fasting. Okay. Now, though this particular verse was removed from NIV version of the Bible. So if you have NIV version, you won't see this particular verse uh, in it. So um, you won't find this verse there. But in uh, New, New, uh, NKJV, New King James Version, why they remove it, I don't know. What I've learned so far, it was either Matthew did not write this himself or this particular verse was deleted or omitted by the one of the scribes who put the books together. It was not that Jesus did not say it because same verse was in the book of Mark, but somehow is that particular verse uh, was actually missing in some uh, particular uh, Bible versions. Okay, praise God. And that this cannot go out except by... Um, by prayer and fasting. Uh, we have this song. We have this song. I remember this one. I remember I remember this one now. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started the prayer and ended with prayer. Oh. Prayer is the master key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key, hallelujah. Prayer is the key. Oh, prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key. Praise God. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Though in many occasions in the Bible that many people fasted, it wasn't about they were fasting to obtain anything from God. Unlike uh, Esther, who fasted in the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 15, with her maids, when she was about to seek favor from the king over the Jews that were about to be destroyed. And then the people of Nineveh, when they fasted in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 5, to humble themselves before God for mercy, when Jonah announced to them that the city had 40 days to repent. Praise God. Fasting aims to develop us spiritually because when we fast, we keep away from sin. It helps. Um, the book, the book of Luke, chapter five, verse sixteen, uh, in the New King James Version, says that so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. He himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Often means frequently. Jesus prayed and even taught us how to pray. And the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 to 15, he made us to know that prayer is the only unique way to communicate with God. A prayerless life stands a chance of being a prey to the enemies and to all the adversaries of life. Praise God. We don't pray because we need something from God. No. We pray because he's our father. We pray to him because he's our dad. And we need to be speaking with our dad on daily basis. In our prayers, we bring to life our heart of thanksgiving and supplication. Jesus taught us that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number seven. Number seven. 
Jesus treasured the heart of giving. And he taught us to give and how to give. But how to give? He said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, that be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpet, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the street, to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your hand know what your right hand is doing. Praise God. So that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in the secret, will reward you. Okay. Now, <laughs> you don't know what many people do. Our brothers and sisters, you know what they do? Especially in churches. They will call some people out to the front of the congregation and tell the old church that they are doing for that person. Oh, um, hello everyone. Praise God. Oh, we have just cleared this woman's rent. We paid all our rent. Okay, and madam, this is another money for your upkeep. And the old church will clap, 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 clap. That's not good. Why are they doing that? Nothing wrong in you giving, but why in front of the old world? And some people... They will take a camera to an open place, maybe on the street, and be recording how they have been giving money to the less privileged. Bible does not support that. Likewise, our Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to show off, you want to show off to people, go ahead. But if you want God to reward you, keep all your doing secret so that you can be rewarded. But people don't care. They don't care. They want that honor of recognition and glory from people. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 8 says that about those that are giving and, and don't give that he, wish, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loveth what a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 30 that, Give, and it be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your love. For... With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 16, say that a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. Our Lord Jesus Christ used the example of a widow. Uh, he, he gave that uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 21. This is not a parable. It actually happened while our Lord Jesus Christ was actually watching. The widow puts in two copper coins in the midst of rich people who are giving from the abundance. But she gave all that she had. Praise God. Then Jesus Christ pointed out and said that, Truly, truly, listen to me people, truly I tell you, he said, This poor widow has put in more than all the others. Praise God. That's what he said. He said, This poor widow has put in more than all the others because he gave all she had. Let us give. Jesus taught us to give. Number eight, he taught us to forgive. Jesus taught us to forgive. Forgiveness is when someone wronged you and it hurt bitterly. No matter how severe it is, I just simply let it go. That is forgiveness. It is difficult sometimes, but the, with the Spirit of God, we can let it go. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ is teaching us. Forgive and forget. A question arose from Peter to his boss, Jesus. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 22, Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven, seven times? Is it up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is 70 times seven times. In some versions of the Bible, it is written as 70 
dash seven times, which is a bit confusing to be 77 times. But in KJV, the New Living Translation and Berean uh, literal, literal Bible, it is clearly written as 70 times 7. That is 490 times. This means that we need to be counting those times we are offending, uh, they are, they are being offended and be making list of them. In short, it is simply as many times as it can be. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ is, uh, was telling Peter. Peter might have been relating uh, to the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 24 which says, If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech 77 times. It is part of our Lord's prayer that God should forgive us as we forgive those that offend us. And in conclusion on this, in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 14, Jesus said, uh, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. It's Satan who will be telling you, no, I can't forgive. No, no, I will die with that. I, 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 I will die. I won't forgive. No, no, no. That is Satan. Praise God. Number nine. Next is how Jesus valued showing appreciation to God. He always thanked God and wanted us to follow suit. In various parts of the Bible, during his ministry on earth, he always gave thanks. He did in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 25, where he said that, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Praise God. Also in the book of uh, the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 36 and the book of Mark chapter 8 verse 6 where he prayed before he fed the 4,000 people. Same thing he did when he was about to feed the 5,000 people. Also before he raised Lazarus from the dead in the book of John chapter 11 verse 41. At the Passover also in the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 17 and the book of Luke chapter uh, and the uh, verses 17 to 18 when he wanted to break bread in the look in, in the book of luke chapter 22 verse 19. in order to show how ungrateful people can be when the lepers when the lepers um out of the ten um when the nine lepers out of the ten he, were healed did not come back to show their appreciation jesus mentioned that where are the other nine only one came back to say thank you praise god so what, what, what he was trying to tell us is we need to show appreciation. Praise God. How will you feel? How will you feel if somebody, if somebody now, um, um, if you do something for somebody and um, they just take it from you and they walk away? They, 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 didn't even, they don't even say thank you. I see them another time, they don't say thank you. How are you going to feel? You are going to feel bad that these people, they don't even, they are not even grateful. And that is how God feels. If God does something for us, and we don't say thank you, Father, you wake up in the, wake up in the morning, you didn't say, Father, Lord, I thank you for giving me and um, another day. It is His grace that wake up every morning. The enemies will have consumed us. They don't want us to see another day. So instead of some people to wake up in the morning and then thank God, you know what they do? They just pick up their phone and go to Facebook or go to Instagram. They want to tell their uh, people. They just anyway. Let us show gratitude to God. Let us thank God. Whatever we do, let us just thank God. Praise God. Um, number ten. The last one is about the statement Jesus made concerning the end time, when it will come back to harvest the earth. In the book of Matthew, chapters twenty-four and twenty-five, the end time. He actually said this so that no one will have the defense that I wasn't told. Nobody told me. He mentioned them in stages. This is an addition to the fact that you have to be born again in order for you to make heaven. Right? Okay, praise God. First is the sign that we predict a second coming, that we hand the kingdom of men and the kingdom of God uh, to take over. Because there's going to be an end to this kingdom on the earth and the kingdom of God will take over. He said, we should be careful of people coming that they are the Messiah. He said many people will be deceived. These have been happening. He said there will be rumors of war. That one has been happening also. There are, there are even wars in various parts of the world now. I think we can hear of that Ukraine and Russia. Nation will rise against nation. That is part of the war. Okay, at least we had when uh, Iraq, Iraq uh, invaded Kuwait uh, at that time. So nation um, will rise against nation. 
that is part of the war. Things like that breed war. Famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places that have been happening. It has happened several times. Christians will be delivered up to uh, tribulations and persecuted and hated by all nations for his name's sake. That one has been happening as well. Bibles are not allowed in some countries. You can't take Bible to some countries. Okay, you can't practice Christianity in some countries. There are hosts of many things that he said that will happen as a sign of his second coming. And when he arrived, he talked about how he will judge the world and separate the good people from the bad people based on their activities on earth. Praise God. He said, those that have helped people, those that have fed those hungry, those that visited the sick and visited people in prisons, those that have clothed, those that are were naked, we go to heaven. And those that did not do this, we find their way to hell. Praise God. Uh, those that we are, the those that we are talking about here are those that are less privileged that to have helped or neglected. If you do not help them, then you have not helped Jesus. That's what Jesus Christ was saying. That since you have not done it for these people, you have not done it for me. And since you have done it for them, you have done it for me. Praise God. We can go on and on and on with the list of some values that our Lord Jesus Christ treasured and taught us. But this is where we have to call it quit today. Praise God. Remember the sermon on the mount as well. Um, the eight Beatitudes, which uh, is a Latin word meaning blessedness in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 12. And paralleled in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verses 20 to 23. You can go through that as well. Um, he also taught us through parables. Read your Bible, especially the first synoptic gospel, if you want to know more about our lost teachings or some things you much cherished and treasured. Praise God. So I sincerely thank everyone for being part of this program today. Please, if you have um, if you have uh, any uh, question you want to ask or any contribution, you can write it under the video. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we won't be able to uh, see all those comments now. But we we'll go through it after the end of this broadcast and I will get back to you in Jesus' name, the Lord Tarris. Praise God. I uh, will thank you so much for watching. Uh, please visit our page on YouTube and kindly subscribe when you get there. And also click, 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 click like so that we can know that you visited. Praise God and Lord bless you for doing so. We are back on Friday for a prayer meeting. Uh, prayer changes things. We, are, we have to bring all our supplications and thanksgiving to Almighty God. And um, we believe if the Lord tarries, because we don't know when our Lord Jesus Christ will be coming back. Do we know? We don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. The King is coming. <laughs> Every eye shall see the king. The king is coming. Our Lord Jesus Christ is coming. People are saying, they said he has been coming for the past 2,000 years. Don't worry, he's coming. He's coming. He's going to be like a thief in the night. So we, we need to be warning ourselves. Let us be careful. If it doesn't come now till you die, so that means if you're a sinner when you die, that you, it's too late. You have to repent now. It can come tomorrow. It can come next tomorrow. Even he said, nobody knows. When are we coming back? It's even the angels of the angels in heaven. They don't know. Nobody knows. So it can come anytime. It can. So we need to be watching out. Blessed are those people who are expecting the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he said this generation will not pass. So my brothers and sisters, my daddies and mommies, you need to be watching out for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be steadfast. And be ready. Okay? And be ready. And be watching out. Don't sleep. Don't, don't, don't sleep too far. I'm not saying don't sleep, but just be careful. Be watchful. Check your ways before God. Check your ways. There are so many distractions in the world now. There are so many distractions. Satan is actually ruling this world. Some sins that some people are they used to hide in those days, years ago. It's now that people are now showing off. They are so proud of it. Now, you see all these kind of all kind of things. Worse than the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. And God is watching. God can say, "Okay, angel, blow the trumpet tomorrow." You just hear the trumpet, pa 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 pa, and it's too late to repent. 
It's going to be too late to repent. When you ask people to go to church, they always think, oh, they are looking for members. No. We come to church and we fellowship together and we share the word of God together. It is better you mix with the children of God than mixing with poor people, other people that they can confuse you. There are some people in this world, all they are just doing is to confuse people and take them to hell. But they wouldn't tell you that. Praise God. May the Lord help us. We are just struggling. Nobody's perfect. Well, thanks so much once again for uh, joining us this evening. Till Friday, till Friday uh, when we come your way again, uh, please uh, stay blessed. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you in the name of Jesus. May all what you are asking God for, may the Lord bring it to your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord wipe away, if you have been crying, may the Lord wipe away your tears. Praise God. And we shall see you on Friday again if the Lord tarries. Praise God. With the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to the New Heart Christian Ministries, a Bible-believing Christian family church, where we pray, sing, worship, express love, fellowship, discuss scripture and where we are constantly experiencing the diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit.